Our second speaker from operator side is Dr. Xi Bi, who is president of China Telecom Technology Innovation Center and also CTO of China Telecom Research Institute. Okay, uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, the uh, current industry trend and uh, an outlook to uh, uh, 5G. Uh, so far we have uh, had an excellent uh, panel of uh, discussions uh, with the views of 5G so far. And uh, uh, I will, uh, based on the experience of a uh, service provider and provide our view. And uh, of course, as we know that uh, uh, we have uh, uh, evolved from 1G to 5G, and uh, in each stage, we had uh, uh, different uh, uh, drivers and, uh, and different uh, uh, technology, and uh, or we so-called the signature uh, uh, technologies, and uh, it has been uh, doing very well. And in fact, our cellular industry. Uh, is uh, very important, and it uh, uh, is one of the uh, uh, pillar for world economy, and uh, its uh, performance actually uh, uh, can be uh, uh, indicated by the five, around the five percent of uh, GDP. So, on top of that, I know that a lot of people are working, uh, attended the IEEE, and the wireless is so hot that. Uh, uh, I'm in the IEEE uh, Federal Evaluation Committee, and we get a lot of people get uh, elevated to uh, the uh, fellow. So it is indeed a very uh, uh, important industry and a fast-growing industry. However, interestingly, as also I mentioned in the tutorial session uh, uh, a few days ago, and uh, so far, and uh, we have our uh, setback as well, and a lot of our famous companies actually disappear. And also, uh, expert in this uh, area has questioned about uh, the further growth and uh, of the uh, of future of the uh, of the industry. And some even openly question whether uh, 60 will be there or not, based on the observation that. Uh, uh, 5G has provided uh, so much uh, data rate that uh, whether people will have the uh, time to uh, spend on the mobile phone, or based on some uh, observations that uh, uh, the 5G is so expensive from vendors, the uh, service provider may be uh, after the 5G investment will have no money left for 6G. So, do we think? Uh, the expert were wrong, perhaps not, because they are expert. And they do have some point of view which we need to uh, understand. So if you look at the, uh, the evolution from 1G to 5G, you can see that uh, one of the uh, observations is that the signature technology in the past had been multiple access, from FDMA to TDMA to CDMA, to OFDMA. However, interestingly, from 4G to 5G, the OFDM, OFDMA uh, did not change. What does it mean? Will this signify the uh, saturation of the uh, technology? And therefore, the claim that uh, the physical layer is dead? So actually, you can take a look of uh, the uh, uh, multiple access, uh, how what has changed? We know that in OFDMA, that from 4G to 5G, we uh, uh, improved the, the filters and also the uh, uh, pre-distortion. And if we look at the history, we see that in 3G, in the CDMA era, the uh, Bandwidth utilization is about 70% uh, in that range. And uh, by the time we do LTE, the utilization is about uh, 90%. And 
And uh, by the time we do 5G, still using the OVDMA, the utilization is about 98%. So indeed, the uh, in modulation area, in multiple access viewpoint, at least from the viewpoint of utilization, there's not much room left to improve. I don't have a crystal ball to predict whether 6G will be multiple access. However, we know that there's not much room left uh, for the uh, improvement. So the innovation has to be from somewhere else. Now, we all know the, uh, uh, the central piece of the wireless communication are the modulations and the coding. And uh, in the 2G, we use the convolution coder of constraint length of about uh, seven. In 3G, we improved to a convolution coder with the constraint length of nine. And in 4G, we uh, jumped to a turbo code. And in 5G, of course, we use the LDPC and the polar code. And in fact, by now, we are about a fraction of dB from Shannon uh, limit and the ADA region. So many people think that there's not much room left uh, or, or innovations that can be done for channel coding unless you depart from AWGN, you do ready fading, you do other channels, or you do short code for a short uh, uh, length of this, uh, communication. So that's why I think the, uh, the, 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 the uh, expert has concerns. And also, so as I said, since the channel coding and the modulation is hard of the physical design, so if both are in the saturation saturation, so what in the way not to say that the physical layer future is dead? And uh, Indeed, if we look at the uh, 5G uh, technology, we can see that we pay significant attention on the data rate. We try to increase the number of cells. We try to increase the number of channels by using the ma massive MIMO invented by Bell Labs. We try to invest more frequencies by go to high frequencies. We, of course, uh, worked heavily on interference cancellation techniques and the coding techniques and also in beam, beam theory. So as you can see that innovation is really in all directions and uh, focused on the data rate. And in fact, if you say that the physical layer is dead, and because if the uh, technology is saturated, perhaps not. If you look at the spectrum efficiency improvement from 2G to 5G, there's no saturation in sight. And in fact, every generation, we have a three-fold improvement in spectral efficiency. So how about the peak rate efficiency? Again, no saturation in sight. That signifies that actually we have a lot have done in the physical layer, and the physical layer is far from dead. And the peak rate evolution is a little bit more than average because it's much easier to do. And if we look at the data rate evolution, you can see that it also have a typically 10 times uh, improvement from generation to generation. And uh, so are the uh, peak rate. So we see that uh, the, indeed that even though we uh, the, 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 uh, the important component of communication, wireless communication has some difficulties, but as an uh, industry as a whole, we're doing very well. So why? we think uh, we have so much worries. Well, that's because we used to have a voice that is the king. 
And both in cellular and wire, however, it has been going down. We don't have the crystal ball for in the future where the voice will be, but usually wired communication is the guide and uh, that can tell us something. So if we use the wild, wild trend as a guide, we see that the voice will no longer be king or is not the king anymore. That's the key app. The Apple, and this is the China Telecoms uh, Apple in history, during which we deployed the 3G, there's nothing happened. During which we deployed 4G, and uh, nothing happened to the Apple. So from this chart, it's uh, reasonable to assume that if we deploy 5G, and the Apple is not going to move. In other words, even though we did great in the uh, uh, technology, even though we, need, we made tremendous progress and without the saturation, and what the saturated is the, uh, the income, and that worries us. Okay, so um, we uh, look further. Why that's the case? Why Apple doesn't change? That's very strange. So uh, starting from 1G to 2G is actually market driven because the wireless is taking off and we have we need capacity. However, from 2G to 3G, we are no longer market driven. I remember when I was working in Bell Labs at that time, and uh, we were all happy with 2G, and uh, suddenly there was 3G. Why? It's driven by competition, by a company called Qualcomm. Give us uh, a technology called CDMA. So the uh, technology driven changed the landscape, and uh, we all rushed to CDMA. Then when we started from 3G to 4G, actually at that time, everyone's happy with the 3G. But again, there is a challenger in town. Who is that? Intel. They come with uh, uh, WiMAX. And to overcome the threat of WiMAX, we have a long-term evolution, LTE turned out to be not long. Of course, from 4G to 5G, we uh, uh, have uh, other uh, motivations. So, uh, and uh, in fact, the uh, uh, Verizon uh, did uh, some work, everyone knows that, because uh, they wanted to do the, uh, they found out that uh, fixed wireless and the TV, uh, uh, application has money to make, and uh, they want the world to uh, uh, help their ecosystem so that they can reduce the price. And therefore, they have uh, the uh, uh, association established that uh, pushed the edge over for the 5G development. So as you can see that the reason that we have not done well in the market is because all the generations so far evolved by competition and by technology, not by market. I think that's at least one of the reasons why the Apple stayed the same. So next gen system from 2G, 3G, 4G uh, has some problem. 5G physical design actually did a fantastic job with the saturation of the modulation and channel coding, we did great. And the, uh, the next gen system did not provide the growth for the industry yet, because uh, the income stayed the same. And uh, of course, uh, uh, that's because of the, uh, as what I said, is the technology and the competition driven. And uh, also, from since 2G, the research main focus is two things. One is data rate, we are obsessed with the data rate. Another one is the cost reduction. 
cost per bit. And uh, so the drivers is not aligned well with the market need. And uh, we uh, uh, started, uh, uh, finally, in 5G, we wake up. We begin to invest in other applications in order to, uh, to, 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 to survive. And the question still hanging there is that, is that too little, too late? So the physical layer design and the 6G will not be dead, I think, if we focus on market need and come up with a set of KPIs that the market welcome and willing to pay. So we all know that the three, we have three pillars of uh, uh, applications for the 3G growth. And, uh, uh, however, this is a good starting point, and we are not doing well at the point. And we all talk about the 3G, I think, in this forum. And uh, the, the 5G is wonderful to support these three applications. But uh, the little guarded secret in the industry is that the three applications are, can be delivered by one 5G standard, but by three hardware systems. And uh, for service provider, we have to buy three systems in order to have these three applications, not one. So we think uh, in, five, we, in 6G, we need to do better. The challenge from our service provider is that can we design one 6G system that can deliver or support all the claimed applications? So the, uh, currently, we have uh, the 5G familiar 5G target. In fact, it can be divided in three categories. One achieved, including the spectral efficiency. We did it beautifully. Two, achievable if we want to. For example, the number of connections, if we have enough customers, of course, we should do that. And also delay. And currently, uh, the, uh, the system China is going to deploy, the 5G system cannot meet the delay of one millisecond because of some uh, configuration choices we made. And uh, if we want to make the one millisecond possible, the price is heavy for us to pay, and we're not willing to pay as of now. Of course, there are other categories it's not achieved. Why? Because the bandwidth, we have a 100 megahertz bandwidth, it's not going to be possible to achieve 20 gigabit per second. So, what can we see so far then, uh, looking towards the 6G? From the 5G experience, from the past experience, can we at least say something about the 6G? Of course, we don't have a crystal ball, okay? Uh, we do not yet know the signature technology to be used for 6G. That yet to be invented by the people in this room. We don't know the drivers for 6G. Most likely it could be by competition again and the technology driven because we don't see the market driven inside in the past, but of course still can, things can change. We don't know what the breakthrough might occur that uh, will be held by 6G. But we do know about some of the trends that are going to stay in course for 6G. And that will tell us something about the 6G. And what are these? Trend number one, we are going to move to the high frequencies. No doubt about it. Why? Because in the past, we are obsessed with the data rate. 
I can assure you we are still obsessed with Daydream. In order to deliver the data rate, we have to invest more bandwidth. The spectral efficiency improvement alone is not going to solve the problem. So we really need to study high frequencies and the devices. What's the characteristic and what we can do about it? So that's, going to, that's here to stay. Of course, people say that when we move to high frequencies, it's more likely to be TDD, and the other part may or may not be the case, because uh, uh, this time when we use the TDD, we found out that it's very difficult to achieve uh, the low, lat low latencies. So that yet, uh, it, the jury is still out. The observation two is that uh, we know that uh, in uh, communication theory, we have a uh, power efficiency region and uh, uh, spectral efficiency region. And when we do physical layer design, we actually pay a lot of attention on this chart and try to see what's our assumptions for the design, whether that's for power or for efficiency. You cannot have both. Because as you can see, the power and the spectral efficiency is on the opposite side of the curve, and that's physics. physics. So, so far, actually, we have two group of thoughts. One is uh, designed for short distance, and those are the Wi-Fi's and the Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth, and they use the KISS principle. Keep it simple. And the cellular industry used to be in the power efficiency camp. We do it complicated. We use the channel coding, strong and stronger channel coding. But the trend is actually changing. The cellular industry is more and more getting into short distance uh, design philosophy. You can see that our peak rate increase is exponential. And hug becomes less and less important. And I even see that the attempt in the standard to uh, almost disable HUC, the option is there. And it will more and more look like the, uh, the, 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 uh, the short distance uh, design. So the question is really that uh, are we uh, looking for spectral efficiency or are we looking for coverage? Because in the past, in the cellular industry, coverage is the king. So the trend is there, but we have to think, is this the right way to do it? The trend three, that we have been using massive memo. In fact, the field test give us a, a big surprise. From here, you can see, in uh, 100 megahertz, at a 3.5 gigahertz band, we're using a 64 uh, transmitter and with 16 users. And uh, we achieved 100 bits per second per hertz. This number, if we were 20 years ago, nobody is going to believe that this can be achieved in wireless. But of course, this is achieved uh, when the mobile is fixed. So the challenge is that uh, the further on the um, memo uh, uh, road and uh, to uh, uh, to to further improve that, and so that we can have uh, more gain on on top of that. And uh, currently, the average spectral efficiency is about uh, less than ten. And can we achieve 30, 40, 50? The trend four is multi-mode communication. We already see that in our cell phone, we use cellular plus Wi-Fi plus Bluetooth, no problem. And of course, we are doing work, just uh, uh, mentioned by the uh, previous uh, people that uh, we are doing relays and uh, D2Ds. And of course, uh, satellite is coming. And also uh, uh, broadband and IoT and licensed and unlicensed everything. 
and through uh, a different frequencies and uh, multi-mode. So multi-mode is here to stay. Trend five is that we are more, move more and more from grand, grand oriented to uh, grand free, and all called uh, connection oriented or connection free, or con connection less. In fact, the, uh, in the past, when we started cellular system, we always have grand oriented. Okay. And uh, trend six is uh, size uh, the, uh, uh, the chip size continuation reduction. And uh, seven is the uh, uh, platform. And eight is uh, personalization, which is uh, definitely needed for uh, uh, the, the, the 6G in order to uh, make money. And the nine is uh, AI and combined with uh, adaptation, which uh, I, I have no time to talk about in detail. And the 10 is the uh, intelligent network that can think and uh, satisfy the customer. So in conclusion, we say that uh, the 5G to move to 6G, we already know the minimum requirement, which is almost similar to 5G, and that can be achieved. However, would that be enough? And what else needed? So in conclusion, we say that uh, uh, we are uh, moved from uh, 1G to uh, 5G, and for 6G, and actually there are plenty of opportunity to do it, and we know the trend how to do it, and we know that we can satisfy a set of minimum uh, requirement, and however, we need to do more in order to uh, uh, be uh, more profitable in this uh, industry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Xi.